Ranger Bill, warrior of the woodland, struggling against extreme odds, traveling dangerous trails, fighting the many enemies of nature. This is the job of the guardian of the forest, Ranger Bill. Pouring rain, freezing cold, blistering heat, snow, floods, bears, rattlesnakes, mountain lions. Yes, all this in exchange for the satisfaction and pride of a job well done. Have you ever come across someone with an I don't give a care attitude? Sure you have. Have you seen someone driving along a road deliberately swerve to hit an animal crossing the road? You know, these kind of people just don't care what they do. They haven't the slightest consideration for the other person. And an animal is just an animal. It was this kind of attitude that stirred up the folks at Three Forks. In fact, it stirred up the whole country around Three Forks, an area where the Little Beaver Creek... Big Beaver Creek and Cougar joined together to feed into the Shady River. And this is where our story begins. The Three-Legged Deer Bart Keen and Jake Campbell have been out all day hunting deer. The two men haven't had one good shot, and they're pretty disgusted and tired. Well, Jake, we might as well call it a day. Yeah, seems that all the deer vamoosed right out of the country. <laughs> Something sure happened, that's for sure. I know where we can get us a deer. Oh, yeah? Come where? on. Come on, I'll show you. I just recognized the landmark. I know exactly where we're at. Okay, Jake, lead the way. Hey, you're right. Why, it's a young buck. Sure. I knew he'd be hey, there. Hey, wait a minute. That's a three-legged deer. That belongs to young Jerry White. Ah, what do we care? What's the difference? It's a buck, What do you mean, it? what do we care? That animal's the boy's pet. You can't shoot it. can I? Just what? Hey, wait a minute. Wait. What for? All we have to say is that the critter was running loose and we took it for a wild one. Besides, what's a measly old animal? Well, what about the boy? Ah, he'll get over it. Well, yeah, I guess so. Go ahead, bag it. What do we care, as long as we get a buck? Now you're talking. Ha! <laughs> Good shot, Jake. Come on, let's pick it up and get out of here. Right. <laughs> this one ought to be real juicy eating. It's been well fed. Yeah, my mouth's watering already. Leave my deer alone. You leave him alone. Go on, kid, beat it. What? You shot... You shot my... You shot my deer. I'll get you for that. Look out. <laughs> ah, you better stay sitting down, boy. You'll get worse the next time. You hit him pretty hard. So what? Next time I'll knock his block off. Come on, let's take the buck and scram. Wait till my dad gets home. You just wait. was a real treat, Steve. Thank you for taking me. Sure, honey. Anytime. Glad you enjoyed the trip. Hey, you got any shopping money left? <laughs> no, I'm as poor as a church mouse. <laughs> I hope Jerry's all right. We've been gone most all day. Uh, typical mother. Anxious to shuck him for a while. Then you start worrying about him five minutes after you've left. I know. Hey, what's the matter with Jerry? Land sakes, he's sitting on the stoop all hunched up and crying. What's wrong, son? They killed Torpedo. They killed Torpedo. Oh, no. Who did, Jerry? Too bad. Come on and cry on my shoulder. How did you get so dirty? Why, there's blood on your face. Jerry, what happened? One of them hit me. Do you know who the men are? Yes. Come on. We'll fix that nose up, and we're going to find them and settle the score. Let them try hitting someone their size and see what happens. <laughs> Shooting a pet deer and striking a boy. They must be real men. Steve, call Bill. You can't take revenge. Can I? Please, Steve, for my sake. I'm worried enough now. Please. 
Jerry you... might get hurt more. Uh, uh, okay, honey. I'll do as you wish. I guess Bill will square things. Jerry, I know you're broken-hearted over a losing torpedo, but he's dead now. You've got to stop crying and talk clearly, or I won't be able to help you. You understand? Yes, sir, Mr. Bill. Your father says that you know the two men. Can you tell me their names? No, sir, but I'd recognize them if I ever saw them again. Good boy. Uh, Stumpy... Grey Wolf, take Jerry and go over to the area around where the deer was shot and see what you can find uh, out. We do right away. Yep, you're coming along, young feller. Poor Jerry. He found Torpedo in the forest caught in a trap. Steve had the veterinarian amputate Torpedo's smashed leg. Then Jerry cared for him and nursed him through the shock of the operation. They became great pals. Who could do such a horrible thing? Some people will stop at nothing. Was uh, Torpedo penned up? No, but he never wandered off the clearing. And he had on a wide leather collar. Mm -hmm. Anyone would know a wild deer doesn't wear a leather collar. Yeah, you're right there, sure enough. It's against the law to shoot an animal so close to a farm or ranch buildings, too. The collar and the fact that the deer didn't bolt... Should be indication enough that the deer was a pet. And the loss of the boy's pet, uh, our pet too, made me angry enough. But the fact that one of the men struck Jerry almost put me out of my mind. I'd like to get my hands on the one that hit the boy. I'd tear him limb from limb. Please, Steve. <laughs> uh, Nancy's afraid I'm going to take the law into my own hands, I guess. Well, men have done it on less provocation, Steve. But believe me, it's not the wise thing to do. Let us handle this. We'll see that these men get their just desserts, all right. You know, there are times when I'm sorry I'm the law. I feel as you do, Steve. I'd like to give these men the thrashing of their lives. But we just can't let ourselves be driven to that. We must keep law and order and let them mete out justice. Oh, I know it sometimes seems that we're slow to act, but we have to be sure that proof of guilt is established before punishment is prescribed. Those men break law. They shoot deer too close to buildings. They shot my pet, too. Here yeah, now, young fella. I thought you were going to keep a stiff upper lip. I'm sorry, Mr. Bill. Is that all you can charge them with, Bill? Yes, as far as the deer is concerned. There isn't any cruelty to animals involved as undoubtedly they killed Torpedo with the first shot. Yep, that's what it looks like, sonny. But I like to get my paws on them varmints. They ought to be tarred and feathered and rid out on a rail. I feel same way. I understand how you feel, but we just can't do it that way, as you well know. Now, the man that struck Jerry is in serious trouble. We can make him holler uncle good and loud for that. Yeah, what do you got in mind, sonny? First of all, Jerry must have a doctor's examination. Oh, I'm okay now. He didn't hurt me much. Just bash me one. I know, young fellow. But we need an official doctor's record of the extent of your injuries. Will he hurt me? Of course not, dear. We'll take him to the doctor tomorrow or even this evening if it isn't too late. Right. Jerry, I want you and your dad to meet me at Ranger headquarters tomorrow evening right after supper. Okay? Yes, sir, Mr. Bill. We'll be there, Bill. All right. We'll run along now so you folks can get squared away. Good night. Good night. Good night. Mr. Bill? Good night. Uh, yeah, Jerry? What are we going to do tomorrow night? We're going to take you and your dad around town and see if you can point out the man that bashed you in the head and shot Torpedo. <laughs> was out back of the hen house when I heard this bang. 
we had sounded just like a shot. And, and then I remembered Torpedo was out there, and I decided I'd check up. Then what you do, Jerry? Well, well, I saw Torpedo laying on the ground, and I, I ran over. And then I saw blood, uh. so I knew they'd shot him. And I started to hit this one guy, wow. and then he bashed me in the nose. Oh. Then they took Torpedo and scrammed. Wow. What's Ranger Bill going to do? Well, he says we're going out tonight to get the guys that got Torpedo. Honest? Yeah, that's what Mr. Bill said. Wow. Would I be shaken if I was in them guys' shoes? <laughs> Hello, Steve. Hi, Jerry. Mr. Bill. We're ready. I'll say he is. He's wound up tighter than a clock. <laughs> yeah, I shouldn't wonder that he is with all his excitement. Ah, when we start? In about an hour. Uh, Stumpy, Grey Wolf, uh, you know what to do? Ah, that's right. Yeah, we'll see you uptown, Jerry. Bye, Mr. Stumpy. If you don't mind my asking, what are they up to, Bill? Or are they working on something else? No, they're working on this case, Steve. Stumpy and Grey Wolf are going to check cars this evening. Well, how will that help? I never can tell. Men might leave something inside their car that'll tie them to Torpedo's killing. I see. When do we start, Mr. Bill? What are we going to do tonight? In about an hour, we're going to let you look over the men in the different cafes in town, Jerry. And see if you can pick out the ones that shot your pet. And bash me one. Yeah. Uh, by the way, what did the doc say? Oh, he said I didn't have any more holes in my head than I needed. <laughs> Don't be a wise guy, son. He said you didn't have any more holes in your head than should be there, and that you're sound as a top, except for a little roughing up. Well, I'm glad to hear that. What do you say we walk down the main street to slow and easy, huh? That'll eat up most of the hour. Are you sure you know what you're to do, son? Mm-hmm. Maybe you'd better tell Bill once more so he'll be sure you know. Okay, Dad. Well, I'm to walk alongside Dad and look at all the men. And then if I see the men that did it, I ain't going to get excited but, but poke Dad on the side, and then we walk out, and then you go in and take over. Mm -hmm, good. And uh, you'll remember that, too, Steve. I'll take over when you find them. Uh, it'll be hard to do, but I will. All right, here's the first cafe. Go ahead, I'll be right inside the door. Uh, all station wagons have Rancho this and Rancho that painted on them. <laughs> yep, except this fella. Uh, yeah, look what he's got painted down the side of his ranch wagon. He ain't got no Rancho. <laughs> Plenty good, huh? <laughs> yeah, at least he's honest about it. <laughs> uh, uh, we look at a lot of cars, but not find anything. Yep. Hey, here's one of them Dodge cars. Uh, they say this one can dodge pedestrians at jaywalk. <laughs> oh, Stumpy. <laughs> you in gay mood tonight. <laughs> yeah, not too gay, sonny. I keep thinking uh, about little Jerry. Uh, <laughs> Hey, what's this? Hmm, you'll, you'll find something. Uh, maybe. Uh, Great Wolf, hmm. look at this collar. Uh, it's wide and made of thin leather. Maybe this is the collar they had around Torpedo's neck. Oh, we find Jerry and ask him. It'll break the boy's heart, but we gotta find those two men while this thing is hot. I think Jerry's getting a little tired, Bill. Yeah, it must be. How about it, son? Want to rest for a while? Oh, no, Dad. Come on. I want to keep looking for those men. How would a uh, cup of hot chocolate and some cookies go while we're resting, huh? I want to look for those guys that shot Torpedo. After we have the hot chocolate, okay? Uh, we'll look some more. That's a promise. 
Okay, it's a deal. Oh, Jake, where have you been? Here, get back in the doorway out of sight. Now, what ails you, Bart? Listen, we got to get out of town right now. What for? Listen, I seen Steve White and the kid prowling through the cafes, and they got Bill Jefferson with them. What? Yeah, you know who they're looking for. Yeah, you're right. Let's hit the road and stay out of town until this thing blows over. Yeah, now let's go. Come on, Jake, let's move. Don't run. That'll only arouse suspicion. I don't care. I want to get to the car and be gone. Wait. What? It's too late. They've seen us. Let's get... Come on. What's wrong now? The ice cream parlor. It's crawling with rangers and the kids in there. I think he spotted us. That's Torpedo's collar, okay? Poor old Torpedo. Never hurt anybody. I'm sorry, Sonny. It's all right, Stumpy. You had to get an identification. Where's the car that you found this in? Yeah, come on, we'll show you. Yeah, there they are. There they are. Huh? Where, Jerry? Right outside there. Huh? There, Which way did they, they go? that way, right down the street. They'll head for the car. The Grey Wolf, we'll chase them on foot. Stumpy, get a squad and follow. Head for their car. Try to shortcut them. I'll follow. I do. Oh! Try and stop us. Stand right where you are. Get hands on top of the car. Quick. There's right. only two of them. Jake, right. 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 Let's okay. get them. All right. Come on. 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 Torpedo. Dry up, you little brat. Don't talk to my boy that way. Well, I'll push your Easy face in. Easy does it, young fella. Just relax. Which one hit you, son? That one, that one. Let me at him, Bill. Just five minutes right here in the parking lot. Just five minutes, Bill. And he'll never hit another child. I can guarantee that. Keep him away from me. He's crazy. Back off, Steve. I know how you feel. I like to push his face in myself. We can't let that happen. Sure he's crazy, Jake. He's a father who loves his son very much. How do you know my name, cop? Oh, uh, you've got quite a reputation around here. You're the kind of wise guy that nobody wants around. You just don't care what you do. Well, this time, Mr. Smart Guy, you're in trouble. Real trouble. Take him and his buddy away and lock him up. Come on! Don't try any funny stuff because I'm just in the right mood to let you have it. Just like you did to that boy. Big, tough man! Huh? Come on, get going! Jake Campbell, Bart Keene, this court finds you guilty of breaking the law that states... You cannot shoot an animal within 100 yards of a corral, ranch, or farm building. You're fined $100 each. $100? That's a lot. Close your mouth, Jake. Bart has more sense than you do, Jake. A few more words and the fine would have been doubled. I wish the Lord, the Lord would allow me to fine you $1,000 each for shooting the boy's pet. That's right. You're a great man, Jake Campbell. I don't know what all the fuss is about. It's only an animal. Order in the court. Bart Keene, you can pay your fine and leave. Thank you, Your Honor. Bart, I find you because you stood by and let him shoot the boy's pet deer. And you knew it was a pet deer by your own admission. Is that right? Yes, sir. It is. And now, Jake Campbell... You are charged with assaulting a child with your fist with intent to do bodily harm. I hit him with the back of my hand, not with my fist. I could give you a year in jail for this offense, but I'd be putting undue hardship on your fine wife. 
and she's already got enough of that with the likes of you. I'm suspending your sentence and paroling you to this court for one year. If you so much as bat an eyelash the wrong way, you'll go to the state penitentiary. Court is adjourned. Come on, Jake. We'll take you home. What for? I can take care of myself. I wouldn't be too sure of that, considering the mood this town is in right now. You better listen, young feller. I heard talk of tar and feathers. Aren't you glad you didn't take the law into your own hands, Steve? Yeah. The only these men moved so fast to solve this thing, it still amazes me. Yeah, I'll see. And boy, that judge was tough today, Daddy, wasn't he? He has to be with men like Jake, son. I'm afraid Jake's incurable. Uh, well, what's that mean? It means that he'll never change. He's beyond help. Not even Jesus could help him? Well, yes, the Lord can help him if... Jake will let him. Well, I hope the Lord does. We'll have to pray for Jake and ask the Lord to help him get over not caring what he does to others. Do you think Jake ever went to Sunday school, Daddy? Oh, I, I don't know, son. Why? Well, he, he mustn't have because in Sunday school he, he would have learned to be kind to other folks. That's what Jesus did. Great day in the morning. What's that, Steve? Oh, I don't know. Sounds like a mob. Let's find out what's going on. Steve, those men are up to no good. I'll say they aren't. I saw a couple of barrels of tar. Oh, no, they're not going to tell you. What are they going to do? What are they going to don't, do? Don't be frightened, son. They're not going to hurt you or us. They're after Jake. They're going to tar and feather I'm him. I'm afraid so. All the hate these people have for him has come to a boil. Do something, Steve. Yeah, I am. I'm calling Bill right now. What's that, Steve? That's right, Bill. I know that's what they're going to do, just as sure as shooting. How many men? Well, there must be about 30 or 40 of them. We'll be out there right away. And you stay out of it. Don't try to stop them. You might get hurt. Let us do it. Okay, but hurry. You said it. Oh, bad news. A mob is on the way to Jake's place to tar and feather him. Jump in, toadstools! Get your shotguns and tear gas gear and get out there on the double. Ranger One to all cars. Converge on Campbell Place as quickly as possible. Be prepared to meet mob violence. That is all. I knew the folks hereabouts were hit up about what Jake did to Jerry, but I didn't think they'd burst into flame. Oh, this thing plenty bad. We'll be there in five minutes. I'll get to Jake. Stumpy, you take the right flank of the crowd, Grey Wolf the left. And don't be afraid to get rough. Get out of there, Bill. We ain't got no fight with you. Yes, you have. You're breaking the law. Oh, no, we're not. Jake's getting what's coming to him. We're tired of his tirades. Hitting kids. What's the payoff? Go on home, all of you. Use your heads. The judge punished, Jake. The first guy what comes through this door gets it. You can't get us all, Jake. But we'll get you. Get out of there, Bill. It's your last warning. We're coming for Jake. I ain't never seen a mob as mad as this one. Somebody's gonna get hurt. They got house surrounded. No chance to take him out back way. Get ready to retreat into the house. Reinforcements aren't far off. I see flashes on the highway. Jake, get into the house and get your wife and children under a bed. Okay, but I'm taking the first five that come after me. You can count on that. They're getting ready to rush. They mean business, sonny. Shoot the first man that moves out. Cut him across the lake. All right, let's get him, boys. What's happened? 
Everybody standing like they were struck. Steve, get the boy and yourself out of here. There's going to be shooting. These men are mad as hornets. Jerry wanted to come and talk to the men. He might be able to help. Let him talk, Bill. Stumpy, Gray Wolf, get on either side of the boy and let him talk. Get Jerry and yourself out of there, Steve. Now we're doing what we come for. Yeah, right. Wait, wait. Listen to what Jerry has to say. Please, listen. All right, son. Speak your mind. Please don't hurt Mr. Jake. You'll get God mad at you if you do, and God won't like it. I'm not mad at it, Mr. Jake, honest. Not even after he shot Torpedo. Who are you kidding, son? Get the boy out of here. Are you guys crazy? Get him out. If you hurt Mr. Jake, you'll have to hurt me, too, because I ain't going to go. Great Scott, the boy's standing in front of Jake, protecting him. If the boy can forgive him, then uh, who are we to interfere? This is an act of God, men, to keep us from doing something we'd be sorry for. Let's go home. Why, why'd you do this, boy, after what I'd done to you? Well, I got to thinking, Mr. Jake, that maybe you never went to Sunday school and learned about Jesus teaching folks to be kind to each other and caring about folks. I figured that maybe you might begin caring for somebody if somebody cared about you. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense, boy. It makes a lot of sense. You know, in a way, shooting your three-legged deer might be the worst thing I've ever done. And then again, maybe it's the best. I'll never forget him or you as long as I live. Well, see you next week for more adventure with... Myron Canaday in the title role, with Roger Compton as Henry and Ed Ronnie as Grey Wolf. Written by Charles Urquhart and John Rowan, Ranger Bill is produced and directed by Jim Grant and Charles Christensen, with sound effects including reproductions from the Cook Laboratories of Stamford, Connecticut, by John McComb. Original music for this transcribed series by Dick Anthony. Stumpy Jenkins, a ranger Bill's old sidekick, as I guess you all know, just adding a little extra word of thanks for getting yourself in on the program today. Always glad to have you along. And I hope you invite your friends, too, for we sure got lots of adventures to tell you about, and we don't want you to miss any of them. So you make sure to be there by your radio every week. Don't lose out on our next story. <laughs> <laughs>